Hi everyone and a huge warm welcome to this special feature on the shift to cloud native. I'm your host for today, Sally Eves, and today I'm delighted to be joined by a fantastic company. It's Glenn Shagnot, Senior Director of Product Management Cloud at Spirant. Welcome, Glenn. Thank you, Sally. It's great to be here. Thanks for having oh, me. Fantastic. A real pleasure. And just fresh from um, MWC Americas as well. Fantastic to see your booth there. That was brilliant. And also, I bumped into your colleague, Stephen Douglas, as well. So the subject of today, all things cloud native, I would say, right up there is one of the big MWC topics as well. So I think right on point with our subject area. So perhaps as a way to get us started off, Glenn, what would you see with all this interest burgeoning around the move from 5G services to be cloud native? What are you seeing as the big talking points from both opportunities and challenges for service providers today? Yeah, well, I, I mean, it all starts with the customers, right? So for service providers, it's really about how do you get to new revenue? Uh, and so when we look at 5G, of course, as consumers, we all enjoy, well, it's going to be faster. We'll be able to watch videos better. And that's fantastic. But really, the opportunities are more uh, very much on the business side, topics you know well, things like private 5G, IoT, uh, you know, uh, AR, VR, those types of technology. So that's that's really where the opportunities are. And so as service providers are going through this transition, you know, they're trying to figure out how do I make that transition, keep my customers happy, attract new customers, keep my investors happy because it is a very big transition. And of course the challenge is there's, there's a ton of technology changing as you well know, underneath the hood. So it sort of feels the same as consumers, but it's built very, very differently under the hood. Absolutely. And it's kind of this looking ahead, I think, for service providers to kind of this foundation level being more anticipatory. And really, as we're kind of moving, as you were saying, this age of convergence, this move to software based services, it's really kind of setting that basis, that foundation to give us all those benefits, the networks, the agility, the efficiency that we can get from cloud natives. It really does secure all that. So from that basis as well, let's perhaps drill into one of the key areas that I've certainly seen, things around testing and visibility. You know, is traditional enough do we need to move beyond that for really realizing the opportunities that cloud native efficiencies provide in order to enable to enable uh non-standalone which is sort of the apex of of what people are looking to do with 5g today it's really a fundamental shift from from what we would call in our space vertical technology to horizontal technology so you know telcos uh have this tremendously valuable ecosystem of, of knowledge and technology that they've built up over the years which goes all the way back to telephone networks and basically boils down to, hey, I can connect to any fiber, any and around, surround any box, and I can figure out just by watching it, you know, all the way up and down the stack, what's going on. And cloud native, uh, you know, is necessary for them to achieve the goals we talked about earlier, but the challenge is it's done in an entirely different way. So instead of talking about, you know, scaling up and getting bigger boxes when you want to scale, we talk about scaling out. We don't build for five nines. We're not trying to buy the most reliable technology. Uh, what they're actually trying to do is build the most performant, lowest cost technology. Well, that's going to fail more. So you start to look into this. You don't have this place you can go. You don't have technology that works the same way. And the question really becomes like, well, well we need a new process or procedure. How do we get control of this thing when we can't even physically uh, access it. Absolutely, absolutely. And I was looking at your new research and report all around CNF resiliency testing as well, and very much kind of drawing into the deep expertise you have at Spirant in this area. And again, I think that really emphasizes the new approaches to testing and visibility that are required today, particularly like what you do with um, CloudShore, for example, and Landslide. I'd love to come back to that a bit later too, because again, I think from that basis of you know, stability and resiliency, it really is the enabler for making that happen. So definitely love to come back to that in a bit if I can. Um, but beyond this as well, obviously everything around cloud native, we're moving to this more, say, disaggregated model. What would you say for, for operators right now in terms of best practices that we could share as they're going along this path? What would be your top takes and advice around that? What do you see? Yeah, so it, it's all about 5G, obviously. So the first thing is, look, test your 5G network, right? And, um, you know, Spirant, we've been around for a long time, so we've helped people. How do you test your applications? But you know, it all starts with that. How well does your application work? Are you going to be able to reach the number of users? So that's that's something that that people know how to do pretty well today, of, of, of course. Um, where it gets kind of tricky is now you start layering this cloud thing in the middle of it. And the question is, what do you do when the cloud goes wrong? Because, um, you know, we tend to talk about sunny day, rainy day kind of scenario. Sunny day being, hey, testing under a great environment, rainy day being, 
you know, what happens when a, when a backhoe cuts a fiber, right, in, in traditional and does your service survive? Well, every day in the cloud is a rainy day is what we like to say. So how do you, how do you understand how those issues in the cloud are actually going to impact your 5G service? Today, those are two different groups within Telco, the application team, the 5G team, and the cloud team. And they don't really have a good common mechanism uh, to, to communicate with one another around quantitative uh, metrics. They don't understand their performance dependencies as well as they'd like. Absolutely. And I think a lot of what you're saying as well is kind of getting ahead. So one of the big best practices here is kind of identifying and problems before they actually get into the production network, isn't it? So I think that's absolutely spot on. And I saw one of your, your articles recently all around kind of cloud native network functions and the differences that you have across different environments, you know, performs very differently in one area to another, doesn't it? So I think that's definitely a key, key issue there, kind of determining those performance requirements and measuring how they're intersect. You know, I think that kind of can sometimes fall in the cracks. You know, no role yeah. necessarily is kind of covering all of those. I thought your points about that were superb. Absolutely, absolutely. Fantastic. Thank you, Glenn. Brilliant. And and again, in terms of kind of tangible sharing about this. So when you're talking to the, the customers, again, across so many different verticals you work with too, what are some of the, say, big real world cases you're seeing um, customers dealing with at the moment? You mentioned some of the complexity really early with the yeah. different layers as well. I think maybe that'd be a great place to start there. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we, we talked about there's sort of this technology problem of how do you introduce the cloud, but it, it's interesting, uh, you know, there's an organizational problem that goes along with that. So every service provider that we talk to today makes sense. There's a cloud team and then there's a team that's that's above that that uses the cloud, right? And so they need to talk to each other. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, they really struggle right now because obviously the 5G services depend on a certain layer uh, of performance, a certain layer for liability from the cloud. Uh, but no one's really until now had a good way to figure out, well, what exactly is that dependency? What does that actually look like before I roll it out into the network? So the first thing that we see when we're talking to service providers is pretty interesting. It doesn't matter which one of those two teams you talk to, the other guy is causing them trouble because they're not giving them the data that they both jointly agree that they need uh, uh, to work together. So um, kind of an interesting organizational thing. So I think that that kind of largely pointed to the opportunity that we saw to help help the industry. Um, we have seen like maybe on the technical side, some specific things. So, you know, what we're essentially able to do is to take the cloud environment and help service providers bring that into a pre-production environment. So what's it going to look like if a server gets busy, if storage gets slow, if the network maybe isn't 100% performant, and so we're able to help people bring that back. And we see things like uh, when you're trying to register 5G users onto the network, it might take a thousand times longer if there's 1% packet loss in the network. So, you know, we see these sort of things and they manifest ultimately in these sort of gloriously uh, uh, devilish kind of uh, issues that you see traipsed all across the media when things start to really avalanche out of control. But the root is very often one of these little things uh, that that you can see that you can see now but you couldn't see before absolutely again i think it brings back these key challenges today in terms of you know, visibility holistic visibility in particular things around yep. integration and as i said before this ensuring of, of consistency reliability and stability so i perhaps love to go to that point as our kind of faint final kind of topic area really about all to all about the actualization about how to address these challenges so i'd love to drill into some of your solutions and i know i mentioned earlier a little bit about about cloud and landslide but how are you working with this kind of enablement and empowerment of network operators to help yeah, deliver right. on this opportunity, particularly around, you know, retaining their competitive edge along the way too? Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, thank you for the question. Um, <laughs> so uh, Landslide, for, for those who don't know, is our performance and capacity testing for mobile networks. So we can simulate thousands, millions of subscribers accessing the network. And as we talked about earlier, the first thing you want to do is to be able to characterize your 5G uh, capabilities. And really, that's what Landslide does, brings millions of users in doing all sorts of things people do, roaming, accessing web, uh, placing phone calls, and we're able to really characterize how well that's working. What we've added now, and, and the new functionality is this additional piece from CloudShore, which allows you, as I said earlier, to bring those impairments that show up every day in production, bring them back to pre-production, and know before you deploy things into the environment, uh, what's gonna happen to your 5G service as you start having packet loss in your cloud, which as I said, 
you'll always have. It's just a question of how bad can it get before things start to break. And again, we'll do that across different dimensions. Absolutely. That's really, really interesting. And you reminded me actually as well about in terms of some of these tangible examples of impact. Um, I was at an event very recently since, since MWC, very much about telecommunication trends and people talking about the challenges they were facing. One of those was an aspiring customer who had moved recently and they were telling me about the benefits they'd had, particularly around their CI CD pipeline. And that was particularly using CloudShore. And it had made a massive difference to them around kind of this early identification and also earlier remediation around potential vulnerabilities. So it was really, really interesting. That was actually two days ago. So exactly what you were talking about there, yeah. really tangible yeah. in conversation about how that makes it makes a difference and again it's it's kind of this move from being far less reactive to being more proactive active intelligence much earlier in the development cycle isn't it yeah yeah and to bring it all to bring it all together what it really helps you understand is hey look if i want to run this particular 5g network function or that particular 5g network function what sort of performance do i need out of the cloud right and 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 secondarily will my will my network function survive uh, a, a degradation in the cloud. But the reason that data is so important is it gives that quantitative information. Remember, we talked about those two teams. Now the 5G users or the 5G CNF providers can tell the cloud, this is what I need the cloud to deliver. And the cloud team can actually pretest to that so that when they integrate, they have a much higher degree of confidence and much fewer issues in production. So it's really just about bringing the ability to quantitatively describe that as opposed to qualitatively. Brilliant, Glenn. I love that. What a way to wrap that together. Fantastic. I couldn't, I couldn't have ended that better. Brilliant, Glenn. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time, for your expertise as well. I'd also say, you know, around environment communications as well, everything you're putting together from a knowledge sharing point of view, I think is particularly powerful too. So perhaps as a way to end it, just a recommendation for everybody tuning in today, check out the Spirant Guide to 5G CNF Resiliency Testing. Again, really addresses a lot of the challenges and the opportunities this sort of enables through our conversation today. There's also a fantastic web page as well all around cloud native testing so highly recommend checking that out and in the meantime thank you glenn for your time and thank you all for watching and listening to it's been an absolute pleasure thank you very much sally appreciate it thank you you too thank you